The first battle of the Masurian Lakes was a German offensive in the Eastern Front for the 13th of September 1914, during the second month of World War I. It took place only days after the Battle of Tannenberg where the German 8th Army encircled, and destroyed the Russian 2nd Army. Using the rapid movements, aided by the East Prussian Railway Network, the 8th Army reformed in front of the spread-out Russian 1st Army and pushed them back across their entire front, eventually ejecting it from Germany. Further progress was hampered by the arrival of the Russian 10th Army on the Germans' right flank. By the conclusion of the battle, the Germans had destroyed the 2nd Army and shattered the 1st in a series of actions over only a few weeks. This pushed the Russians so off balance that they were unable to mount any serious operations on the German front until the spring of 1915. At that time the Germans launched the Gorystanov offensive which pushed the Russian forces deep into Russia. Chapter 1 – Background The Russian offensive in East Prussia had started well enough, with General Paul von Rennenkampf's 1st Army forcing the 8th Army westward from the border towards Königsberg. Meanwhile, the Russian 2nd Army invaded from the south, hoping to cut the Germans off in the area around the city. The lack of railways and logistical problems meant they made slow progress even though they faced only a single German army corps. During their advance Yakov Zelinsky, chief of staff of the Imperial Russian Army, made a strategic mistake by separating two large Russian armies and urging them to move rapidly over a marginally trafficable terrain in response to the requests of the French for an early offensive. As a result, the armies approached in a poorly coordinated manner, being isolated from each other by terrain obstacles, and before the logistical base could be established, the troops were worn down by a rapid march and had to face fresh German troops. The Germans developed a plan to rapidly move their forces to surround the Second Army as it moved northward over some particularly hilly terrain. The danger was that the First Army would turn to their aid, thereby flanking the German forces. However, the Russians broadcast their daily marching orders in the clear on the radio, and the Germans learned that the First Army was continuing to move away from the Second. Using railways in the area, the German forces maneuvered and eventually surrounded and destroyed the Second Army at the Battle of Tannenberg between 26 and 30 August 1914. According to Preet Buttar, as the magnitude of the disaster that had befallen some Sornov's army became clear, Renenkampf ordered his men to pull back from their most advanced positions. First Army took up a line running from the Diem Valley in the north, through Weilau and Nordenburg, to the northern shore of the Mauer Sea, immediately to the west of Angerberg. His reserve divisions formed the new 26 Corps on his northern flank. Between Weilau and Nordenburg were his three and four Corps. The second Corps was placed opposite the German garrison in Lozen. The 10th Army filled the gap with what was left of the second Army. The 10th Army was newly formed, and consisted of the 22nd Corps from Finland, the 3rd Siberian Corps, the Iturkistan Corps, and the 2nd Caucasian Corps, with the 22nd Corps opposite like, and the 3rd Siberian Corps to their south. Two corps were kept in reserve. On 31 August, Hindenburg received the following orders, 11 Corps, Guards Reserve Corps, and 8th Cavalry Division are placed at your disposal. Their transport has begun. The first task of 8th Army is to clear East Prussia of Renenkampf's army. When the situation in East Prussia has been restored you are to contemplate employing 8th Army in the direction of Warsaw. Hindenburg and Ludendorff placed their Guards Reserve Corps, I Reserve Corps, 11 Corps and the 20th Corps on the Russian northern flank. Their 17 Corps was deployed at Lozen, and their I Corps around Lyke. Chapter 2 – Battle on 4 September, Hans von der Goltz's East Prussian Army of the South, attacked Mlawa, which was captured by the 1st Landwehr Division, and 35th Reserve Infantry Division, on 5 September. On 6 September, the I Corps advanced on Arras, and its 2nd Infantry Division captured Nikolaikin, while its 1st Infantry Division captured Johannesburg, and its 3rd Reserve Infantry Division captured Biowapiska on 7 September. The 1st Infantry Division reached Arras on 9 September, 
and then Ronton. In support of I Corps, the German 17 Corps reached Kruglankin on 9 September. On 10 September, the 3rd Reserve Infantry Division was near Lyke. While the German I Corps attempted to turn the Russian left flank, the other four German corps to the north put pressure on the Russian III and IV Corps, as the Russians fought a defensive action. The Russian commander of the 22nd Corps sent a message stating, I cannot carry out my orders to march against the flank of the Hindenburg army, as I was attacked at like and beaten. Rennenkampf was forced to retreat to the east. The Russian IV Corps then launched a surprise attack to the German center, but the attack faltered, and the Russians continued their retreat east. On the 11th of September, the German I Corps had reached Godop and ordered to cut off the Russian retreat. By then the German 17 Corps had cut the road between Angerberg and Godop. On the 12th of September, I Corps reached Pilipanen and the 35th Infantry Division had reached Tolinkiemen. The battle had turned decisively in the Germans' favor. By the 11th of September the Russians had been pushed back to a line running from Instaburg to Angerberg in the north, with a huge flanking maneuver developing to the south. It was at this point that the threat of encirclement appeared possible. Rennenkampf ordered a general retreat toward the Russian border, which happened rapidly under the protection of a strong rear guard. It was this speed that enabled the retreating Russian troops to escape the trap Hindenburg had planned for them. The German commander had ordered his wings to quicken their march as much as possible, but a trivial accident, a rumor of a Russian counterattack, cost the Germans half a day's march, allowing the Russians to escape to the east. These reached Gombinen the next day, and stole Oponen on the 13th. The remains of the First Army retreated to the safety of their own border forts. Likewise, the Tenth Army was forced back into Russia. German casualties were about 10,000, Russians 100,000 to 125,000. Chapter 3 Outcome. On the 11th of September, Grand Duke Nikolai dismissed Yakov Zelinsky as the commander of the Russian Northwestern Front, replacing him with Nikolai Ruski. The Grand Duke then ordered the 5th Army from Galicia to a position north of Warsaw. On the 14th of September, the last of the Russian army had retreated over the frontier, as the German 1st Infantry Division reached Wilkowski, within Russian territory and the German 3rd Reserve Infantry Division had reached Suvorki. On the 15th of September, the Germans formed the 9th Army to protect Silesia. The German advantage was bought at a cost. The newly arrived corps had been sent from the Western Front and their absence would be felt in the upcoming Battle of the Marne. Much of the territory taken by the Germans would later be lost, to a Russian counter-attack during 25-28 September.